This video is not going to have all the bells and whistles that other videos have had because I'm putting this together on an expedited timeline for you. I didn't plan on putting this video out this week. In fact, we have a whole nother video about high speed trains that's going to come out next week now, I guess. But there were some issues that I felt like I had to address this week because Tuesday night was election night and I don't have all of the information that you probably have by Saturday. But how it looks right now is that Democrats won't win control of the Senate and Joe Biden will probably barely scrape by, maybe with exactly 270 electoral votes, in fact. And I see a lot of people on Twitter and on Facebook saying that this is embarrassing. It's embarrassing that we came so close to re-electing Donald Trump, that we live in a country that would do that. And it is embarrassing. You know, 70 million people or something getting close to that voted for Donald Trump again. 70 million people looked at the last four years at Donald Trump embracing fascists and white supremacists, degrading democracy, looked at him failing to address a pandemic, causing an economic depression, and said, nah, you know, we need four more years of that. But one thing that I think you should keep in mind is that, yes, in fact, this election kind of was rigged. No matter who wins, Donald Trump or Joe Biden, this was an illegitimate election. Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, tweeted on Monday. He said, we are deeply concerned about election irregularities, politically motivated arrests, and violence in Tanzania's election. And a lot of people pointed out that that's probably how people would talk about us if we weren't a big and powerful country. If we were a small or poor country and Donald Trump and the Republicans had done the same thing that they did in this election, we'd be getting condemned by the United Nations. We'd have people calling us a failed democracy and they'd be right. Let's look at some of the things that Donald Trump and the Republicans did leading up to this election. They tried to purge 300,000 voters from the voter rolls in Wisconsin and 800,000 from the voter rolls in Pennsylvania. They closed 21,000 polling places across the country, disproportionately in black and Hispanic neighborhoods. During a pandemic, when being around other people is dangerous, most states implemented mail-in ballots, but many states made it really easy for elections officials to throw out your ballots. Either they had signature matching rules, maybe they required notaries or witnesses, things that can be really hard to find for a lot of people, especially in a pandemic. In some states, they can throw out your ballot if you use the wrong color ink. In Pennsylvania, your vote doesn't count if you don't mail it back in two envelopes. This makes it really easy to spoil ballots. In Michigan, elections officials say that 77,000 ballots Seven times Trump's 2016 margin were spoiled this year. In Florida, despite the fact that voters there overwhelmingly approved a measure to allow former felons to vote, the Republican state leadership there implemented an illegal poll tax requiring people to pay all of their court fees and fines before they were able to vote. And then they made it nearly impossible to figure out how much you were supposed to pay. Donald Trump appointed one of his political allies and one of his donors to lead the U.S. Postal Service and then directed him to slow down the mail in an election when he knew that much of his opposition was going to be voting by mail. Louis DeJoy removed mail sorting machines. He removed mailboxes. He cut Postal Service hours. Mail, not just election mail, but all mail, was slowed down to the point that up to 25% of it was not arriving on time because they knew that their opponents were going to be disproportionately voting by mail. And meanwhile, they were in court with judges that they appointed, making sure that states like Wisconsin and Minnesota could not accept ballots that arrived late even if they were mailed on time. If they even arrived at all, that is, because the day before the election, when it was already too late to get mail-in ballots in anyway, the Postal Service told a federal judge that they had not delivered 300,000 ballots. And then when the judge told them to sweep all of their facilities to find these ballots, they failed to meet the deadline that the judge had set. Meanwhile, in Graham, North Carolina, a swing state, a group of black voters had gathered to march to the polls, but they were attacked by police using pepper spray before they could make it to a polling place to vote. They used a chemical weapon banned for use in war by international law against children. 
so that they could stop black people from voting. In Texas, a San Antonio police officer drove by laughing and did nothing as right-wing militants tried to drive a Biden campaign bus off the road. In Fort Worth, Texas, police escorted a convoy of right-wing militants past a polling place in a majority black neighborhood, assisting in and endorsing illegal voter intimidation. In New York and New Jersey, Trump caravans blocked roads and bridges and the police refused to respond to it. In Miami, a police officer went into a polling place with a Trump 2020 mask to intimidate voters and the only response from his police union was to remind us that they had endorsed Donald Trump, a tacit endorsement of voter intimidation. The police in America have shown their true colors. They've attacked protesters hundreds of times. They've been cozy with right-wing militants and murderers. They've acted as an arm of the Republican Party. They've been the GOP's loyal, taxpayer-funded party militant, intimidating voters, attacking protesters, and protecting right-wing extremists. Donald Trump attempted to recruit an army of loyalists to guard polling places and intimidate voters. His allies have been arrested for threatening voters. Foreign operatives have been interfering in our elections, spreading disinformation, and the Trump administration knew about this for years. They knew exactly what foreign agents were up to, but they decided not to do anything. No matter who wins this election, it's certain that Joe Biden will win the popular vote. With the numbers I have, he's already ahead by more than 3 million votes, and there are still a lot of votes to be counted in deep blue states like California, New York, Washington, Massachusetts, New Jersey. This will mean that in the last eight elections, Republicans have won the popular vote only one time, and if Donald Trump had won this election, then that would have been the third time in 20 years that a Republican president had won the election without winning the popular vote something that's only happened twice before 2000 in our entire history. Why so much now? The system is the same. The system always had the potential to collapse. It was never, as we now know, as strong as we thought it was. But while I think you'd be right to say that it was always broken, democracy in America never completely collapsed. Because we never had a political establishment that was rooting for it to collapse. That's not true anymore. Donald Trump and the Republican Party have at every turn, at every opportunity, tried their darndest to undermine democracy because they know that they don't have enough voters. They know that their message of white supremacy and plutocracy cannot lead them to victory unless they stop people from voting. It can't win under a democratic system, so instead of changing their policy ideas, they've decided to be rid of democracy. And now, when even that plan seems to be failing, they're calling on votes not to be counted, for votes to be thrown out, and for election results not to be respected. We have it all. The election irregularities, the political violence, the vote rigging, all of the hallmarks of a failed democracy. But I don't think that it's failed yet. Joe Biden, it would appear, is the president-elect of the United States. Donald Trump lost. That means that there's still a little bit of democracy left in there. But this is our last chance, our last opportunity, and we have to take it. We have to make major changes and we have to make them now because we have this one more chance to save our democracy, to make sure that what happened here never happens again because we cannot have another Donald Trump. We cannot survive another Donald Trump. Our democracy cannot survive another Donald Trump. We need media reform. We need political and democratic reform. We need education reform. We need economic reform. We need to completely rethink the way that we do politics because this can never happen again. And Donald Trump and his entire merry band of fascists are still out there and they need to be destroyed before they can break out again. And if they lean fully into their fascistic nature, if they try to steal this election from us, or if they rise up with their armies and try to force their will upon us, we are morally obligated to resist them. We must fight back. We must resist tyranny. And we must root out the fascists wherever they dwell and destroy them. Thus always to tyrants, 
Six Semper Tyrannus. With his 19 men so true, he frightened old Virginia till she trembled through and through. They hanged him for a traitor, they themselves the traitor crew. His soul goes marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah.